Have you noticed that your hair is drier than usual? Maybe you're more tired and can't seem to lose weight. And you've noticed that your skin is just really lackluster and your hair is falling out. And despite all these kind of vague symptoms, your blood work looks normal and you've been told you're fine. But deep down on the inside, you know something is going on. I'm Dr. Mary Alice Mina. I'm a board certified dermatologist. Welcome to my channel, The Skin Real. This is where I give people real skin education and information so that they can make informed decisions about their skin health. Sound good? Let's dive in. This is my weekly recap video where I share my key takeaways from my most recent guest interview with Dr. Dana Gibbs, an ear, nose, and throat surgeon who now specializes in thyroid issues for her patients. If you want to hear the full episode, be sure to stick around to the end of this short video where you can watch my full episode with Dr. Gibbs. I am not a thyroid specialist. I am not an ear, nose, and throat surgeon. I am a board-certified dermatologist, but I'll tell you what. I see a lot of people with thyroid disease, and a lot of times they're coming in because of skin issues. Sometimes this is one of the first symptoms that people see or notice. They may find that their skin is really dry, their hair is falling out, that's a big one, or their nails are really fragile and breaking, or maybe they're just really soft, and they're coming to see me because of these issues. And then when we do a review of systems and we delve a little bit deeper, we also realize, hey, they're having trouble with fatigue or maybe heart palpitations or anxiety, these sort of vague symptoms that can be attributed to a ton of different stuff. And I love having Dr. Gibbs on because she shares with us how sometimes these symptoms can still be related to your thyroid, even when your blood work is normal. And so if you're having these vague symptoms, you feel like you're not getting the answers that you need and people are maybe dismissing your symptoms as something else, dig deeper. Be sure to see someone who maybe takes a more integral approach or holistic approach to really delve in to see what is the root cause of this and if it is, in fact, your thyroid. So just to recap, because a lot of my listeners are interested in their skin health, so what is your thyroid? So your thyroid gland is this butterfly-shaped gland at the base of your throat or Dr. Gibbs describes it as the Honda symbol, which is probably a little more accurate. And it plays a major role with your metabolism. And it's regulated by your brain, it goes to your thyroid, and your thyroid sends out these thyroid hormones, which help regulate your metabolism. And of course, metabolism is so important for so many different organ systems. That's why these symptoms of either hyper or hypothyroidism, meaning too much or too little thyroid hormone can be so generalized and so vague and sometimes really difficult to pinpoint exactly the root cause. So there are basically two ways that I see as a skin doctor thyroid conditions. It's either too much thyroid hormone, hyperthyroidism, or too little, hypo. Probably the more common would be hypothyroidism. So let's just break down some of the skin manifestations that you can see with disorders of the thyroid. I would say number one is that your skin is really dry. Now with hypo, your skin may feel kind of cool and clammy to the touch. You have a hard time holding on to water. And so it's really dry and flaky. No matter how much you're putting on moisturizer and lotions, it always feels dry. That's because our thyroid is important in regulating cell turnover and also lipid metabolism. And the lipids in our skin barrier help retain moisture. And so when that is out of whack, you're going to have dry skin. Now, on the flip side, if you have hyperthyroidism or something perhaps like Graves' disease, your skin is going to be overreactive and it may feel really sweaty. That's common. And you may always feel very warm, hot, or flushed. If you've got hypothyroid, low thyroid, your skin can have a real dull, lackluster appearance. And believe it or not, it can even take on this yellowish tint. And a couple of reasons why this happens. With hypo, low thyroid function, you're going to have less blood flow to the skin, and you also can get higher levels of carotene in the skin. And that's because carotene, which is in a lot of things we eat, spinach and things with a lot of vitamin A, that cannot be broken down into retinol like it normally is because we need T3, which is a hormone from the thyroid to do that. And so when you have low thyroid levels, 
low T3 levels, you cannot convert that carotene into vitamin A or retinol. And so you may take on this kind of yellowishy hue to your skin. And you can especially see it in the palms and soles of the feet. Similar to if someone is eating too many carrots, things like that, like babies who are given a lot of carrot foods and products, they can get that sort of yellowy hint. And that's because of a buildup of carotene in the skin. Hair loss. This is something that can happen with both. So with hypothyroidism, you can get really dry, brittle hair seems to fall out in clumps and patches, and it can be really distressing to people. And I just had a patient recently who had Gray's disease, and she came in with sort of all over hair loss and hair thinning, and people just told her you had androgenetic alopecia or female pattern hair hair loss, which, yes, given her age, she probably had a little bit of that as well. But actually, she also, with blood work, was discovered to have Graves' disease as well. So if you are experiencing hair loss, it's important to rule out a medical condition instead of just being told, oh, it's just female pattern hair loss, um, nothing else. So Again, making sure you're not having other symptoms, that can be a tip off that it's due to your thyroid and not just female pattern hair loss. Other thing I see with conditions like grave disease is that there can be this link with other autoimmune conditions, things like alopecia areata, where your lymphocytes are attacking actually your hair follicles and you get these very discrete round kind of oval-like shapes of hair loss within your scalp. And uh, you can also get things like vitiligo, where again, the body is attacking your own cells, this time your melanocytes. And so you get these white patches on the skin. So those are other tip-offs. If I'm noticing someone has hair loss, they also have vitiligo, and maybe the hair loss looks like alopecia areata, and they have symptoms of hyperthyroidism, that's going to veer me towards maybe Graves' disease or an issue with the thyroid as the underlying cause for all of this. So things to be aware of. Not all hair loss is female pattern hair loss. Make sure that your provider is ruling out an underlying condition, especially if you have these other sort of vague symptoms that could be related to your thyroid. I definitely see nail changes with both hyper and hypothyroidism, brittle nails, weak nails. With hyper, they tend to be a little bit softer. Skin swelling, this is something we can see with both hypothyroidism. Sometimes the skin, the face just gets really puffy and we call it moon facies. And then with hyperthyroidism, it really seems to be around the eyes. And sometimes the eyeballs can look like they're protruding and popping out. And this is something, if I see this, I really want to make sure that person is getting evaluated for their thyroid because it is a sign of these glycosaminoglycans being deposited into the soft tissue around the eye and the muscles around the eye, causing inability to fully close the eyelids and the eyeballs to actually be pushed outward. Other things we see are something called pre-tibia myxedema, where you can get these sort of thickened, reddish, firm plaques of the front of your legs or your shins. And um, when you press on it, it's not like regular swelling of the lower legs, what we call edema, where you push in and it leaves a little pit or a mark. With hyper and hypothyroidism, it's non-pitting. So you get this puffy swelling, but when you push on it, you don't get that pit in the skin. So that's another tip off to me too, that wait a minute, this is more than just normal swelling or lymphedema. This could be due to your thyroid gland. And a lot of times if I notice when I'm doing what we call a review of systems, someone is telling me I cannot lose weight, I'm very lethargic, I cannot get moving, or conversely, they tell me I'm having anxiety, I'm having palpitations, and I'm eating all the time, and I'm not gaining weight. That's also a tip off that this could be due to your thyroid. So again, a lot of these sort of vague general symptoms, you could attribute them to other things, but it's important, even as a skin doctor, a dermatologist, who I am not a thyroid expert, but it's important for me to to recognize that our skin is a reflection to what is going on on the inside of our body. Our skin is not just this aesthetic canvas that a lot of times we think of it as just beauty and it stops there. Our skin actually reflects what's going on internally. And sometimes it's the dermatologist who is diagnosing these conditions because we see these little tip-offs that actually this is not just run-of-the-mill dry skin. This is not just dry nails from frequent hand washing. And this is not just normal swelling because you stand a lot and work all day on your feet, right? So that is why I love dermatology so much because it's these clues to the internal health of your body. And oftentimes it can be your thyroid. And Dr. Gibbs really 
eloquently shared with us how you can still have thyroid issues with your thyroid levels being normal, with the standard thyroid test being normal. And so that's why it is so important to see someone who can support you, who can delve deeper and really investigate this. Because if you're having these symptoms, really make sure it is not something going on with your thyroid. And and even things like stress can have detrimental effects on your thyroid especially if this is over long term. And Dr. Gibbs shares with us how the stress of medical training really impacted her thyroid and gave her some hypothyroidism that was really left undiagnosed for years and years and years. And so that is why she is really on a mission to help people with their thyroid health. And of course, if you want to hear the full episode and Dr. Gibbs really eloquently break down the different types of thyroid disease and what to be on the lookout for, be sure to check out my full episode here and I will see you next week.